My lovely imps, we now enter round three of the Pride Discourse Gauntlet. The other topics, straight boyfriends of bi girls at Pride. Why is that such a hard sentence to say? It is, though. And the Egg Prime Directive. We have delivered you fine discourse solutions already. But now it's time for us to move on to another one. Because if you believe the waves of discourse without knowing how to read them for what hides underneath, you would believe that there is a war brewing. That right now beneath our very noses, a gender war is bubbling up. A war between femme boys and trans women. There, there's little, everybody has little slingshots and they're shooting cat ears and, and doggy collars and, and, and estradiol pills at each other. Oh, 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 here's my estradiol pill, but it's not for being trans. Here's my estradiol pill for being trans. Ah, oh, ah, ah. And people are fighting with wobbly spears that that don't stand up right you know they're going uh ah, they're going and they're like i'm not turned on i'm not turned on no god no you know so um yeah um uh yeah it's a uh, there if you would believe if you believe the signs on the surface you would think that there is a war between femboys and trans women um but, uh, hot take, I don't really think there's much of a war, but there is a lot of toxicity. I'll say that much. There's definitely a lot of toxicity. And I want to talk about it in as fair of a manner as I possibly can. Uh, obviously, I am a trans woman. So, um, you know, I have, uh, I guess I'm declaring my bias. But I'm going to try and be as, as fair as possible and bring up the the pains and concerns that are at the center of why this would be a discourse at all outside of just people looking for excuses to fight which is honestly kind of a lot of discourses on the internet so um let's talk about it the femboy versus trans woman war now uh there has been a lot of there there seems to have been a lot of flare-ups of this very recently um, this, this sort of, uh, and I think that one of the, the reasons why there's been flare-ups has actually been because of a brutal blow dealt to the femboy community when one of the sort of icons of, uh, their community, uh, didn't really come out as a trans woman per se, but kind of did. And that's Finster. And when I say kind of did, that's not me imposing that. That's Finster has made jokes about that themselves. So don't get mad at me, okay? That's not, I'm not putting words into Finster's mouth. The femboys have been mad at Finster because Finster made too many jokes about femboys only lasting for five years before becoming trans women. I didn't make that up, okay? I'm just, I'm saying, okay? And I know that currently, as of the last video that I saw with Finster, Finster uh, uh, is sort of any all uh, gender fluid, not really sticking to a single label uh, type thing. Uh, and in fact, seems to have a lot of fun playing with different labels and, and flaunting them in different ways. And I think that's, pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I like that. I, I think that's based. But it pisses off some people. And uh, and the, the latest flare-up seems to have been downstream of that, where uh, the femboy side of things basically says, okay, there's, there's, there are femboys who basically are okay with trans people, um, and then there are femboys who really do not like trans people, especially trans women. I need to be clear about that. 
I, I'm going to try and talk about both without letting either one, you know, represent the whole. The, there are femboys who are engaged in this war who are fine with trans people generally, but who believe that uh, somewhat of a continuation from our last topic, the Egg Prime Directive, basically believe that uh, the current standards of uh, queer culture are uh, are erasive of femboys, that they feel like uh, everyone just assumes that femboys are trans women without necessarily um, uh, consulting them, that there is a, a, that a lot of egg jokes and whatever are directed towards femboys and they might not necessarily like that. And uh, they might even feel that there is some sort of erasure of their experience as a result of this because so, because in certain spaces, and again, I must remind you that this is online. This is not a real world type thing out, outside of the simple fact that the online is a part of the real world generally. Um, this is not, this is a Tumblr post uh, normalize straight people type situation. Obviously, we all know that in day-to-day -day life, nobody's talking about either trans women or femboys basically ever. It's just it's not a topic that's coming up regularly in your day-to-day -day life for 90% of the planet. However, in online spaces, because of a perceived prevalence of the narratives of trans women, some femboys feel that they are being erased or that they are being uh, that their experience is being lumped in with a group that they don't necessarily identify with. Wow. On the other side uh, of this war are trans women. Um, oh, sorry, I skipped. Oh my goodness, I almost made a terrible mistake. Rewind just real quick. There's also a section of femboys that absolutely despise trans women and are extremely far right. And I don't think I need to spend a lot of time on that faction, though I will have to talk about them, so it's important that I acknowledge their existence. Because they are they do exist and they are not um, they're not like a like a totally uh, tiny section of the femboy community. The right wing femboy phenomenon is a real real thing. And, uh, I mean, God, fucking Nick Fuentes. What? Oh, my God. Why am I hiccuping? Nick Fuentes was sort of infamously busted for posting about right-wing femboys all the time and then going on a date with one. That definitely wasn't a date, but totally, obviously, visibly was. Um, so, there we go. Uh, now, on the other side of this war is uh, uh, trans is, is trans women. And uh, not all trans women, but some trans women choose to engage in this conflict. And on their side of things, uh, they feel that, uh, that femboys um, basically uh, want, uh, are, a, are a, a community that isn't really a community. That it isn't that it is a a identity that has problematic elements to it, and that it is used at, or that it is argued and put uh, on an equal level to a uh, a community that is currently uh, struggling with a lot of different things. So, as an example of this, um, the idea uh, that uh, here's one such example that I've seen. And I'm going to talk about a gamut of things, so don't think that this represents everything. But one such argument is, um, hey, uh, femboys are a, an identity um, that is, uh, is simultaneously loved and hated by right-wingers, but clearly has a, the ability to, um, to basically disappear into right-wing spaces and thrive in right-wing spaces, which are largely targeting and threatening us. And... Uh, we're supposed to pretend that that's the same thing as our identity, which is actively being persecuted. And people are trying, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm getting at there? This is, there is an, a perception that trans women are being asked to 
uh, have sensitivity to a group that clearly has a very strong right-wing element and is clearly able to at least somewhat uh, coalition build with the right. Additionally, uh, trans, there is a section of this trans woman side of this conflict um, that argues that uh, the, the femboy identity as a whole um, is a potentially problematic identity. Uh, and in the most extreme cases, they, this faction or this section will argue that femboys are, like femboy as an identity is wholly flawed, like inherently busted to its core. And that identifying as a femboy in and of itself is a sort of declaration um, of, of certain things uh, that should be avoided and that people should be discouraged from uh, um, acting as such. Um, and uh, beyond that, there is also the argument that femboys and the femboy community want to, uh, want to basically suppress the existence of trans women or people who would otherwise be trans women by basically being like, no, no, you're so hot. You don't need to transition. So there's that section as well that basically says, hey, why is this, you know, we think that the femboy community encourages to be like, no, you're so sexy, you don't transition. So those are the basic battle lines that have been drawn. Femboys feel uh, like, uh, you know, a section, and I'm trying to address the, the better sections of each of these communities while acknowledging the, I should say not communities, participants in a war without getting too far off. Is this, um, is this, is this making any sense to anyone? I recognize that I think this war, I think this war is very silly. That's why I keep saying war. Uh, but I think that nonetheless, there are real things that people are talking about here that we should, um, yeah. Ah, yes, thank you. Uh, as, as Doe in YouTube chat says, one element of this discourse is femboys not liking when trans women post in femboy spaces, not safe for work or otherwise. There is that as well. Um, there is a mutual uh, frustration and simultaneous frustration and, uh, and overlap between these communities in certain ways um, where, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of trans women before they come out spend time identifying as a femboy. And uh, a lot of femboys question and wonder and sometimes decide that they are trans women. So there is a section of these communities where there's almost a, uh, a, a, a long existing overlap and that bothers some people um, pretty bad. So, um, so this is a whole thing. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is um, there should not be a war between trans women and femboys. Um, you are not enemies. Uh, there is no need to have enmity whatsoever. I mean that. Um, now, uh, in the, it, it, now right now, there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of right-wingers who like to fetishize both trans women and femboys. Um, and of course, because of, of certain pre-existing biases in right-wing spaces, uh, they seem to be a little more permissive and and uh, accepting, I say, with with many asterisks, uh, of femboys over trans women, obviously. But when push comes to shove, right wing communities are not going to be friendly to femboys. They are not going to be friendly to trans women. They are going to brutally oppress uh, and divest of them all power possible. So. Uh, people need to keep that in mind, that in the end, uh, femboys and trans women are not at war, and in fact, both belong to a category, a larger category, uh, of, of gender variance and deviance that is seen as a threat by hyper-conservative, traditionalist, far-right, uh, Nazi, whatever you want to say, all of these different groups all take umbrage 
with any type of gender variance that involves transgressing the traditional lines of gender as they define them. Even though, of course, we all can acknowledge that those lines are not well defined, even at the best of times. Um, so, uh, a couple of things that I think, now that we've laid everything out, um, and I've, I've gotten that out of the way, I want to talk about a couple of specific aspects um, that I think are valid and that I think are, and other things that I don't think are valid. Um, so, um, let's talk about one that I think is a tough conversation, um, but uh, that I think it behooves femboys uh, who self-identify as such to pay attention to. The femboy identity as it exists in this current moment, um, it has... It has a lot of, um, it has a lot of baggage. Now, most identities have a lot of baggage and associations, but femboys in particular, in this current moment, as an identity, has a problem in its construction with a fetishization of youth. And that is something that our entire culture struggles with, but it is especially, especially uh, apparent if you spend any time looking at and listening to uh, femboy communities and people who are passionate one way or another about femboys. It is like a magnifier. Um, people have talked about the term twink death a lot because uh, twink death is... It's kind of a cruel term and kind of horrible and has a lot of assumptions that are pretty weird and yucky. It's, you know, it, like it demonizes aging. But twink death comes out of, uh, uh, out of gay spaces and specifically is a, a huge concept in femboy spaces. This idea of of, of, oh, the twink death. Yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you. Somebody brought up t twink death before I even said it. Um, the twink death thing is like a huge concept within femboy communities. It is, it is the, the fetishization of youth and the, the idea of, of like sort of ejecting people once they reach a certain arbitrary level um, is incredibly common in this, uh, with this identity label and with this community. So when when people say that the femboy community has some fundamental issues as as formulated as a community, there is some truth in that that is very should be worrisome and also should be worrisome to the people who call themselves femboys and I think it is. Um I I think it is worrisome. I don't know if it's always acknowledged as such, but I think that it torments and tortures people who uh, see themselves as femboys. This idea that it's a limited identity that you will age out of, um, that at a certain point you will no longer be who you are or who you see yourself as. And I think that has issues, right? Because, um, and I don't think that that issue is shared with most other identities. People don't age out of being a trans woman or a trans man. People don't age out of being non-binary. They don't age out of being a man or a woman. Um, you, you can age out of being a girl or a boy, um, but that's particularly uh, specific when you're talking about the femboy community because there's a lot of fixation on the perceived youth and perceived beauty that is attached to youth. Um, yeah, exactly, Windleby. That's a really good point. It does have parallels with the concept of the wall. Yeah, it does, absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's right, it's time to end... <laughs> Sentient Rat says, that's right, it's time to end femboys and begin fem men. Yeah. This is due to the inherent fetishization of femininity. Well, that is even a bigger thing because the femininity in and of itself is often, um, is often heavily tied up into uh, concepts of youth, like traditional understandings of femininity. I've talked about this before where, um, you know, 
uh, conservative society treats old women like like hell. Um, uh, conservative culture basically does have that concept that we brought up of the wall, that there's like, y like they almost despise old women because they are not what they, they no longer fit the stereotype, the rules of what the conservative idea of that gender is. And so they're treated poorly. They're treated like they're broken or flawed or disposable. And it's horrible. And I'm not going to say that these things aren't imposed on other identity groups like trans women or whatever, but those communities are very actively involved in uh, not building their identities around such things. There are, of course, contingents of trans, uh, 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 you know, trans communities that are, you know, like the super trans medicalist types, the people who are obsessed with passing. Those people tend to be fixated on it, but that is not a, it is not even close to as much of a hallmark of the broader trans woman community um, that that's, you know, that this is a, uh, um, uh, you know, it's, it, the broader trans woman community does not build the identity concept with such a centered version of, uh, of youth as femboy communities do. Um, and yes, that's a very, very good point, Mr. Krabs, that ties into this well. Mr. Krabs says, fat and plus size women too are also treated badly. Conservatives would shame women with any fat on them. Well, you want to talk about uh, weight in the femboy community, weight is already unbelievably uh, uh, brutally judged in, in American society at large. And in the femboy community, um, let's just say that there is a lot of problems with the encouragement of uh, weight-based uh, uh, body dysmorphia. There is an obsession with thinness. There is an obsession with skinniness. Um, and, and do you see what I'm getting at with, um, at eating disorders? But do you see what I'm getting at with, um, the identity and, and community, uh, is, is in a rough spot because it is very much, uh, it, as an identity, it, it, it struggles with, uh, with being overshadowed by its consumptive form that like people are looking for an object to consume and some people want to be that object and also but also for some people it's more than that so it's in a weird place now my position on this because i am not a participator in this war is that i think that the goal should be for people to work together to wrest that identity from those elements. That I believe that the, the idea of a femboy or the concept or identity of a femboy can be liberated from these things. It just might be hard. And I think that when there's a conflict like this, where there is a um, investment in, uh, in drawing battle lines and people, that people are more likely to ignore these problems. And I do think that um, I've seen m myself that, that, you know, there is an investment in being like, oh, no, like, this isn't a problem or this isn't as big of a problem in this community when I, I think it is. I, I think it is really a big problem. Um, fat phobia and a weird age obsession and youth fixation um, is, is definitely seems to be an issue in within the femboy community community. Now, um, the other aspect that, uh, that gets very weird is, um, when talking about hormones, this is a flashpoint of conflict between, uh, a lot of people, but specifically in this so-called war. Um, there is a undercurrent of people in the femboy community that see it as uh, like a betrayal of some form um, to, to take HRT to, uh, you know, make your body more feminine. Because to them, uh, that's an indication that you are becoming like something else. 
which is, I'm going to be honest, that sounds very toxic to me. Trying to be like, oh, I'm a natty, like I'm a natty, natty's all natty, bro. I'm a natty femboy is like, what are you even talking about at this point? Like hormones are like, or, they're or, organic parts of your body that help your body structure itself in certain ways. Why the fuck? Would you, why the fuck would you, but it is, it's a real thing. And in fact, you know, I mentioned Finster earlier. That was a real thing that happened where uh, uh, Finster was not being open about uh, HRT for obvious reasons. Not that Finster ever had to be open about using HRT, but rather that there was an active need to conceal because of how weird and angry and aggressive people can be about that. Um, and of course, on the other side, there are people who basically, uh, there are people on the other side of this conflict, on the, on the trans woman side of the war, who are like, you know, well, if you're going to be taking estrogen, you should probably, why aren't, why aren't you just a woman or whatever? And if, if that, and, and to them, I would say, are, are you listening to yourself? Are you listening to yourself? Why would you make the only type of people who could, why would you try to make the argument that the only type of people who could take estrogen is specifically a trans woman? Like that's not how that works. Um, yeah. Uh, I remember when, when Vosh called him out on it. Yeah, a lot of people did, obviously, of course. But also it's like, I mean, I if I'm not mistaken, Finster has actually done like a video uh, or at least a section of a video talking about the fear of uh, of of rep repercussions for being honest about whether or not you're taking HRT. Um it's a very charged issue. And uh of course, the reality is that hormones are just hormones. Hormones do not have to be tied to any particular gender. Uh, at all and aren't tied to any particular gender. You can have all kinds of T levels and estrogen levels d on any level of the, of the gender spectrum. Um, me being a gender ascensionist, you know, believing that we should step beyond gender and that we should, we should shake off the idea that everything needs to be parsed through the concept of gender. Uh, I obviously find the idea of, ad, of like tying gender to, uh, what hormones you're taking to be foolish. You know what I mean? That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, your hormones are your hormones, your body is your body, and what you decide to call it is your prerogative. However, I will also grant that there is... Uh, because I'm, again, I'm trying to be as fair as possible here. I will also grant that there is a, when people, much like I said in the egg, the egg discourse, sometimes it just seems like a femboy really wants to be a woman, but doesn't feel like they can, you know? And, uh, that sucks. And that's sad. And uh, I think that we should try to make that fear less intense and that we should encourage people to be able to overcome that fear. Um, that certainly seems to be the case for a lot of people. Um, that there is a fear that, oh, I can't do that because then it'll be bad for me, even though um, obviously um, it's probably already not very good for you. Um, if you're gender non-conforming in any way, you're in hostile territory at the current moment, so you may as well be what you really are. And I think this is true for a lot of people generally. I think there are a lot of people who feel, um, even people who begin to challenge gender, uh, who feel that they have to be, uh, they have to jump into another box. They can't just go, you know, where they want to go. Again, gender ascensionist. I want I want people to step above and beyond gender. I want people to realize there is no boxes at all. You can float and 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 gather the traits that you gather that make you feel good and be yourself. You 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 are as a unique being. And if there's a term that helps you express that, use that term and and great. 
because it's all a big mess anyway. Um, but I think that it's especially strong uh, in femboy spaces where there is, like I said before, that, no, you're so sexy, don't transition. I need you to be my boy. I need you to be my, my, my boy, my sexy little boy. And uh, I do think that's a real problem. And I do think that it, um, when it's, it's not just the like, no, don't transition. It's no, don't transition. Because if you do, we're going to harass the hell out of you. And we're going to look the other way when the Nazi femboys roll in and the racist femboys roll in and the fat phobic uh, femboys roll in and start heckling the hell out of you or harassing the shit out of you. That's a real thing that makes people actually scared. And I think that people should kind of pay attention to that. You know what I mean? Yes. Another bored person says, Demon Mama, because of the toxic politics around this, there is a fear by many femboy creators that coming out as trans will quarter their income, which is a real thing. They're not imagining that fear. That's a real thing that actually unironically happens. And trans women who used to identify as femboys in the past have experienced it and talked about it. I know some who've experienced that and talked about that. That um, there is so much prevalent misogyny that, uh, uh, that that can be a very real thing that people fear. That they feel, I can't do this because like people will start hating me just because I changed this, the way that I identify and the way that I communicate myself, which is really unfortunate and really sad and feels super, super objectifying. So this is a complicated thing. And again, I want to reiterate, there is no war. There should be no war between trans women and femboys. Uh, but you can probably see where the points of agitation come from. And what I'm hoping is that in talking about this and communicating about it, people can see more clearly and will be less likely to jump into the fray and cause the agitation to get worse. That people will go, hold on a second. Maybe we can actually, maybe there's a better way to deal with this. Um, and... Uh, and I hope that that's the case because I do think that trans trans the overlap between trans women and femboy communities, um, both as a you know a transitional space where some people you know before they come out exist as femboys to some people who you know are you know are femboys and and go hey you know whatever to people who are saying this is more where I'm comfortable all of this 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 space um, is going to continue to exist. Uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, and I would hope that uh, people will start to see their shared struggles and where they are both being punished by the same demented system, which is to say hyper-conservative uh, uh, objectification, patriarchal culture, um, you know, right-wing men largely who want to consume people as an object to their taste and command their culture and their lives uh, accordingly. That is, that is what is being fought against. Um, yeah. I think I touched on everything. I think I touched on, on, no wait, I didn't. There's one other thing I wanted to talk about, which is, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about the section of, of the trans women side of this war that, that, at, that says that femboy is a fundamentally flawed identity group. There is no saving it. It's a problematic thing to identify as at all. Uh, I don't agree with that side. And I want to explain why, which is uh, I, I understand where that side is coming from because they are usually coming from a position of critis attempting to criticize patriarchy. But I don't think that they're succeeding in criticizing patriarchy in the way that they think that they are. The idea, basically, and I'm this is a this is a steel man of this position. Okay, the idea is basically that uh, femboy, as an identity, only exists 
as a basically a uh, marginalized sexual subgroup of men that is tied and locked into uh, uh, a uh, a performance uh, and is also lied and uh, or, or tied and locked into uh, a fetishization of youth that there is no way for that identity to to be broken out of that and that as it persists it will continue to basically be a prison that people will be be aged out of against their will and lead to a a collapse of their sense of self um these are all things that i've talked about in this so i believe there is grain there is a element of truth to these critiques but the idea that that identity group is completely and utterly insult like a, a uh, what's the right word? Irreparable? That it is a that is a lost cause? I don't think that's true at all. And I don't think that in and of itself it necessarily reinforces patriarchy, nor does it necessarily reinforce uh, objectification or patriarchal violence. I don't think that it does necessarily. And in fact, I encourage people to take these terms for themselves and use them as liberatory structures. I don't think that that there should be an age that you age out of being a femboy. And I think that if people want to take that for themselves and be, I am a femboy. I support trans women who regularly identify as femboys when they feel like it. I think they should be able to do that. Totally. 100%. Because I think that, that these identity labels should be a part of expression and not a rigid box that you are locked into that is a uh, that is a, a, a system of, uh, of, of, of categorization, but rather as a tool for, for expression that is as useful as you want to take it. And that's it. There should not be any hard lines on any of these, ever. Because there can't be. Because gender is too nonsensical. Because it's too tied up in performance and uh, uh, and 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 uh, uh, self-identity, internal, external perception and self-perception to ever have a single clear answer for these things. So there shouldn't be. And I, I so I want to just say to the people out there who feel like femboy is fundamentally flawed, I understand where you're coming from and I understand completely the critiques, of, of femboy and the femboy community. But remember that gender is nonsensical. These, these social uh, categories that have been drawn often for us and are attempting to control us are not definable. You cannot, even if you are trying to build a definition that is in opposition to the structure, you are, you have to remember not to write yourself into a new box, you know? And that the end goal is liberation. Liberation of ourselves, liberation of our bodies, liberation of our expression, liberation of our ability to say who we are and not have it told to us. That's what I want people to remember. I think I've touched on everything there is in the femboy versus trans woman war. I went longer than I intended to, but I also felt the need to dive into it, and I think there's a lot of meat for us to dig through. Take that how you wish. Anyway, thanks for watching. We have more of the gauntlet to go through soon. Hit subscribe, hit like, leave me a comment. Thanks. All right, the gauntlet.